Yep, this is what I had to do yesterday. Good morning guys, welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. I want to thank you for joining me today. So as you can see, we have the entire plenum removed off of my O1 Aztec. And if you have been following this channel over the last few vlogs, you'll know why. If you haven't been following me, I'm going to tell you why. I have an intermittent miss on cylinder number three. It comes and it goes. It usually happens when the car is at idle. Um, when it's under load, there's no misfire count. Um, the car runs strong when it's under load. And uh, once it's once it's like at idle and it's warmed up and the engine slows down, that's when the misfire counts ramp up so if you want to see that just look at a few of the other vlogs that I've posted about this topic this is where I left off though um, I didn't document me tearing any of this apart last night um, because I really wasn't sure how I was gonna do it I was gonna try it one way it didn't work so I ended up in removing the entire plenum obviously um, somebody told me that you could probably do this job just you know undo everything around the plenum leave the throttle body on and uh, you should be able to bend it up you know um, that was not the case with mine uh, my EGR pipe was getting in the way I actually kind of bent it just a little bit it's got a little crease on the back now hopefully that's not going to cause any issues I hope um, and the main reason why it, you know it's kind of a pain to take the throttle body off is because there's two there's one here and there's another one there but there's two coolant lines that actually run into the throttle body to keep the throttle body cool and those are kind of a pain to deal with um, that is a brand new crossover pipe I did install that when I was rebuilding the engine um, uh, so yeah I don't think I really got to the point of what we're doing um, we're doing fuel injector um, stuff today, <laughs> last night. So basically, uh, I removed the entire plenum, and I'll just move it here. I left the throttle body on, but disconnected the coolant lines. Got to be careful because all my screws are still there. So carefully set that there. And uh, yeah, I had to disconnect that and my fuel rail. I got all the injectors out. Um, so number three, which is this cylinder right here. I kind of wish I took the gasket off because I'm planning on reusing it. Should be all right. It's not really, I'll just wipe them down and whatnot. Anyway, so um, intermittent miss on three, cylinder three. Back here, center cylinder. Um, Thought maybe it was a spark plug issue. Took the spark plug out, there was some fouling on it. Um, I was thinking maybe it was because of the rich condition or maybe that cylinder was running lean, I don't know. Either way, there was some fouling on it. And I replaced the spark plug with uh, another AC Delco 41-940, which is what I put in this when I rebuilt it. And um, it still had the miss. So then we went and we replaced all of the spark plug wires because I didn't like the wires that came with my kit when I rebuilt everything. There was some generic brand and I wasn't happy with them. So these are actual AC Delco wires now. Replaced all of them. That wasn't the issue. Um, before I replaced any of those, I did trek the coil, move the ignition coil to another cylinder, and the misfire stayed on number three. So here we are. Um, I'm really hoping at this point now it is the number three fuel injector. Uh, maybe the injector is getting fouled up. Um, when this car was initially rebuilt, it ran 
really well other than a miss caused by a bad coil but we replaced all the coils and then it ran perfectly smooth then it ran out of gas because the gas gauge was kind of wonky and ever since then it's slowly been running funny so I don't know if maybe the fill injector got fouled up on that particular day um, or whatnot but this is where we are so let me see if I can find it down here this is the number three fuel injector um, it was stuck in the cylinder or in the intake actually um, so that was fun trying to get out um, so yeah, this is our number three injector. There's the bottom of it. O-ring came out on both sides. So hopefully this is our culprit. I have no way to really check, um, unfortunately. So, And ironically enough, number six also came out. Uh, it was stuck, so I pulled it out. This is what number six looks like. It actually... I'm, remember the weird grossness on the end of it there but the tip doesn't look too bad some dirt and such in there a little bit so if you want to buy a brand new injector for this car um, the cheapest one that I found today was a hundred dollars 102 to be exact and that's 102 dollars per injector when I originally called I was thinking oh it's $102 for all six. They came as a set. No, no. Apparently these are like delicacies. So, $102 for one injector. There is no way I'm going to do that. And <laughs> I say that because I'm not replacing these with new ones. I mean, I'm not going to buy $600, over $600 in injectors. I don't have that. Um... Would I like to? Yes. I would love to put all new injectors in this because, well, we're doing this. I mean, it's a hassle to get to this point. It would be best to replace these with all new injectors. If I put one new injector in and leave the other five as is, then that new injector is probably going to have a better fuel spray compared to these, and it's still going to throw some stuff off. Um... So I didn't want to do that either. So we went to the junkyard. Yes, yes, the junkyard. And uh, not really the best, uh, you know, thing to do. But I'm going to do it anyway. So I bought four, or th <laughs> four, three. I bought three of these. Um, I'm going to clean them up, obviously, a little bit. But... All three of these came out of an 03 Grand Am with the same engine. I chose the Grand Am because it's obviously extremely easy to work on when they're at the junkyard. I found one that already had the throttle body and stuff removed, so all I had to do was take the plenum off, and that was it. So I didn't have to really fight with anything else. So I got three of these. Like I said, I'm going to clean up the tips. I'm actually going to try to clean all the tips up you know, while they're out. Um, they all have their O-rings, so hopefully these are good. I bought three because, I, you know, hopefully, like I said, if one's bad, then I have two other ones to look towards. So hopefully they're all good. And um, the one, uh, the one had a clip that was really rusty and bad, so we'll probably won't even use that injector. I'll probably use the two with clips on them still. So we'll just set these, I don't know, over here. Um, so my, here's my plan. If cylinder three doesn't get corrected with a new injector or a newer injector or a known good injector, I should say, then that means we have a problem with an actual, it's an actual mechanical problem in the engine. Not enough compression. Um, this engine is old, obviously. This engine has 175,000 miles on it. It was, or I should, yeah, 175,000 miles, just about, somewhere in there. It is, uh, it was 
poorly neglected before I bought this car. Um, but we've been driving it for quite a while now. We have been keeping the oil changed. So there's no more gook coming out of the engine, no more sludge. It's starting to look like, you know, regular oil. Um, obviously cleaned up as everything as best I could on the top and whatnot. The only thing I couldn't do was the, um, the block. I couldn't do anything with the pistons or the rings. You know, we, the rings could be, I don't think it would be the rings because it's not burning oil. We don't have any smoke. So that may not be it. Um, maybe we have a, a bad valve. Um, I did re-lap, you know, all the valves and such when they went in. Um, but maybe, um, maybe a valve is slightly hung up. I don't know. I'm hoping the fuel injector is going to be the, the issue. So the plan is, this is what came out of number three. We're going to completely discard this one. So we're not going to do anything with that injector. It is going to stay out of the engine. This is number six. Obviously, you know, like I said, I got to clean it up. We're going to take number six because I know number six, cylinder six was not missing. And we're going to put number six into the number three spot. That way we'll know that we have a known good injector in cylinder number three. And we'll see if our miss goes away. So we're going to use that one. And then I'm going to take one of these that I purchased. Uh, and we're going to stick it in number six uh, because number six is up front. Um, it's not the easiest one to get to because of where, you know, this bows in, but it is up front. Um, I mean, I suppose I can maybe take one of these off and, and move it over, but I just figured six because it got stuck and I had to pull it out anyway. So we'll put that in six. If I change my mind, if I end up going with either one of these, I'll tell you guys. But right now, the plan is to put number six into number three and put one of these new foreign ones into number six and see if our miss is going to carry. Am I going to document this whole process? Probably not. Um, there wasn't a whole lot to really getting the injectors off. There's, if you're trying to do this, um, here's the connector for three. So this green thing is a locking tab. You, you got to pull up on it, it's already up, and then the tang is back here, you just push it in, and this slides out of the injector. Um, and then to get the injectors off, um, there's these clips that are on here, you can see. See, there's clips. They hug the um, fuel rail. This one is broke. I don't really know how important these are. There's one on there. But then the O-ring is obviously, you know, then this part with the O-ring gets shoved up into the rail. Um, they were tough to get out, so I don't know. I might maybe use another clip from, you know, one of those maybe And when I put this in three. These should just slide off, but these have been on there for so long. I don't know if that's going to budge. The one lip is gone. That doesn't feel like it wants to slide. It's not moving. I don't know. Um, but hopefully, maybe if, you know, there, there's just the one lip and that's in the fuel rail, maybe, you know, the fuel rail screws down onto the intake. So maybe that'll be enough to keep it from leaking or, you know, whatnot. Um, the reason why I didn't mess with the fuel injectors in the first place was because I didn't want to disrupt them. So when I tore my engine apart, I disconnected the fuel lines. And I took the intake off with the fuel rail and injectors in place. Um, for this very reason, because I really hope we don't cause a gas leak. Because there's no way to really check any of this. Um, you obviously can't run the car until the plenum is on and all that stuff there. And all these harness and everything 
are hooked back up, so we're not going to know right away. Uh, or we might, if it's bad enough. <laughs> Another thing that happened was we broke our PCV to EVAP line when I was trying to get it out of the uh, valve cover. It snapped right off, and I replaced this once already. The spongy part, the spongy line, you know. Um, had a hard time finding a good line. So we bought one of those today again also. So here we are again with this. This line here, it looks decent. It's still slightly cracked, but we should be able to get it over. And The grommet's good, though. And another elbow. Because the elbows, I think, I broke the elbow, too, trying to get it, the PCV out. Where did I put that? No, that's the other one. Here it is. So I cracked, I cracked the elbow, which I think I also replaced. There was our PCV valve. Still looks pretty decent. And that's where it broke. So we got a new line to put on when the time comes. All right, so I'm gonna get to this. Wish me luck. I took my WD-40, took some paper towels, and I wiped down the injectors. So I'm just gonna show you a comparison real quick. This is number three. This is what number three looks like. I did not clean this one, obviously, because it's not going back in. That's what the face or the tip of it looks like. You can kinda see some dirt rings and such around there. I think this tip kinda got bent a little when I was trying to pull it out. Oh, there we go, so we just snapped it back into place. So. so that's what the end of that one looks like. And then this is number six, and I cleaned it up with the WD. So we wiped around the end, and then there's the face. So you can tell it's a little shinier. Hopefully that opens up more, uh, you know, more uh, spraying capacity, at least from the outside. I don't know what the inside's like. Our issue with this one probably is on the inside, I would assume, but that looks pretty grody. And I did the same thing with the ones on the rail, still. So, I um, can't really see them, but we did wipe them down in the same manner, so they were all wiped off. And then the ones over here also, we also took care of. All right, so now here's the fun part. I get to put them back into place, back on the rail. And uh, this is where it's gonna start to get really, really serious. <laughs> All right, so the fuel roll is back in place. Got the two screws in, nice and tight. All the injectors look like they're all sitting. Uh, some of them, you know, you can feel can't see that one, but one there, the one here, and the one here. Um, some of them you can feel them actually, uh, you know, in the other ones they kind of take their time. But the rail's all flat. These are zipped down. I think we're good. So I'm gonna pull these papers out, these paper towels, wipe down the gasket surfaces and I don't I'll take a look at this one I don't think I damaged it I think it just popped out of its little home yeah it should be all right so we'll wipe that down real quick um, and then put the plenum on hook all that stuff back up and keep our fingers crossed that this is going to take care of our thing um, I did exactly what I originally had planned on so Number three now has the number uh, six injector, which is a known good injector. And the one, one of the ones from the junkyard is in number six now. So that's what we're gonna go with. All right, so we got the plenum back on. There's really no going back now. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess I could, but everything, for the most part, those injectors are now hidden uh, so 
if anything's going to happen or leak, especially, you know, like the ones I had to take out and such, we're really not going to be able to see that one. Um, this one, if it's leaking, we'll probably be able to see because it's right there on the edge. But that one, we're not going to be able to really see that one. So that's going to be kind of tricky. Um, so I just have to get the other accessories hooked up. Uh, we're going to have to rebleed the cooling system, obviously, because we had to pull those cooling lines off of that throttle body. So I have to go get the coolant and uh, we'll top off the radiator and then we'll do the bleeding procedure through the bleeders on the thermostat housing and over here on the water pump. Um, and we won't be able to do that until we start it. So, All right, guys. So, everything's back in place. Coils are hooked up. Plugs are plugged in. All of our wiring connectors are in their appropriate sensors. Got our bleeder valve off here so we can uh, dump some coolant in. And I gotta open that one up yet. Before we do anything though, we're gonna get inside. We're gonna pump the key over a few times. Not turn it over. We're gonna cycle through the injectors. And uh, I just wanna come out here and see if uh, you know we smell any kind of gas or anything. Right now, um, all the gas that did spill out, I think is gone, so we should be able to cycle this. Get them primed, and it should be, we shouldn't have a problem, I hope. Okay, so sorry if I sound ridiculous, guys. I don't smell any new gas. I don't see anything coming out of this new one we put in. I might prime it just a few more times because those in the whole fuel rail, you know, emptied out. So we'll just uh, maybe just a few more times anyway. Sorry for all the noise. Something's getting done over here at my neighbor's and I'm not sure what. smell anything new like I said from what I can see with our number six injector it's I don't see anything wet down there like I said unfortunately I can't see number three I can't even touch number three the rails in the way yeah that's the only downside you know to all of this is Some compressor. All right. Uh, anything leaking underneath? That's coolant that just spilled out everywhere. No, I don't see anything leaking. Cool. All right, let's get some uh, coolant blood out of it and we'll start it up. So, put it in our little high top, self-made, you know, homemade funnel. <laughs> uh, opened up that bleeder, dumped some coolant in it. Waited for it to come out of the thermostat, out of the thermostat hose there. Um, the radiator's full. So, um, I closed this up, you can see So now we'll, I guess we'll go ahead and start it up. Uh, we'll let that cycle through. I got my threaded uh, fitting ready. Coolant's gonna go everywhere, but whatever. 
we got our Tech 2 back. Uh, we're going to use this, obviously, to monitor our misses, if any. Fly. It flies in the car. Annoying. Uh, fingers crossed that it's not going to leak anywhere. That's my one main concern is uh, it's going to leak somewhere over there. And I'm only concerned about it because we can't see it. You know. Uh, misfire data is. Alright. Here we go. No fuel pressure yet. No fuel pressure yet. That's probably why I didn't smell the gas. Uh, that's cool. It's okay. <laughs> well, I guess the good thing is our number six injector from the junker seems like it's working. Nothing leaking except my exhaust. <laughs> yeah, I don't smell gas. I just smell burnt antifreeze. So our gasket lines are probably okay. So it normally happens when it's warm, but every once in a while it'll happen while it's, uh, you know, cold. The RPMs are still up. It looks like our Coolant is getting full. I'm gonna shut it off just for a second so I can pull that off of there. And cylinder three still has a miss. Ugh. Yep. Two, four, yeah, cylinder three is still missing. And we know we have a good injector there. That's a known good injector that we put there. So it is, I don't know. You know, one thing I probably should have checked for, I should have maybe looked at the wiring going to that injector. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a short or something in the wiring. Yeah, it's missing a bit now. Once it starts to get warm, so it's probably it probably is the uh, uh, maybe a valve or la lack of compression. That thing's still burning off back there. If it's if it has something to do with the heads or the valves or something, uh, I'm not even gonna worry about it. It's like I said, when we have it under a load, I don't want to kick that out. But when it's under a load, you guys have seen it in the other videos, it doesn't miss. Um, it doesn't miss at all when it's under load. But it seems to be missing now when it's at idle and it's warm. Why am I hitting the wrong button? E either way, um, you know, I'll just have to live with it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to tear that head back off again. Alright guys, so I think that's going to be it for today's vlog. We did the uh, fuel injector switch. 
uh, you know, it to see if it was going to make a difference, and unfortunately it does not. So I think um, it could be a wiring issue going to that um, to that injector, maybe. Uh, I, I do kind of wish I had taken the time to look at the wiring situation, but um, I do find it strange that, uh, you know, it only does it um, when it's at idle. I would think if it's a wiring issue, I would think that it would be a consistent miss, um, a dead miss all the time, uh, even under load or such, um, but I could be completely wrong, so I don't know. That could be the case. Um, or it probably is a mechanical issue with the head um, maybe there's a valve issue um, you know I did buy the the heads from a junkyard I did clean them I cleaned the heads I re uh, you know reset the like reset them re uh, lap them into the to the head you know we cleaned them up um, so uh, everything should have been sitting perfectly fine um, if it were piston rings or something I would assume We'd have smoke. It doesn't smoke. Uh, so I don't think our compression rings on the piston are bad. Um, or maybe the compressor rings are bad and the oil ring is good. I don't know. Uh, it's an old engine. Like I said, it's been neglected for a long time until now uh, when I bought it. I tried to fix it up. And I always knew there was a chance that this thing wasn't going to run 100%. So it you know strangely enough ran perfectly fine for a while and now it's um now it's not running perfectly fine it's still running good i am still thankful that it still runs as good as it does so i'm not really complaining i just wish i could figure out what the issue is but if it is a mechanical issue uh i'm probably not going to do anything with it um i'm just gonna enjoy this thing drive it until its time is up and go from there I guess um, tomorrow I might drive it to school and um, I might see if we can do a um, maybe like a cylinder uh, a fuel balance test or something with a fuel pressure gauge and uh, we'll run a test I think this tech 2 will allow you to do that we just need a fuel pressure gauge and that is something that I don't have so I guess we'll go from there um, if I figure anything out um, obviously I'll let you guys know in the meantime Give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and check out teespring.com slash store slash Mike's Fuel Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That's it. I'm going to go clean up and eat. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.